The next section is about case studies, which again is part of descriptive research. Case study, just whenever you are just looking at one person or handful of people, and you usually are trying to investigate them um, extremely and in depth. For example, those population, like those five people, are gonna be very unique in a different way. So you're gonna just try to just understand what's going on with them. A good example of case study is gonna be Jeannie. We talked about her before in language development. Um, unfortunately, she was abused and she couldn't acquire any sort of language um, before puberty. So even like the, um, her first language, I mean, she couldn't speak at all. So after rescuing her, they tried to just teach her language, but she couldn't acquire again. So they decided that it's not possible to learn a language after puberty. The pros of that gonna be in-depth understanding of the individual's life. The cons of that gonna be you cannot generalize the result to a bigger population based on just one person, right? Because like Jeannie, she was very unique, I know, but like maybe there would be someone out there would be like more motivated about learning language or any other skills. Um, maybe Jeannie was just sad at some point. Maybe, I mean, she didn't have enough cognitive resources. I mean, maybe she, she was atypical. So we don't know much about her and we shouldn't just generalize one result based on her. Another way of descriptive research is correlational research. It is very important because it, uh, and it is very common, especially in psychology. Uh, the goal of that is just giving you direction and the strengths of um, the relationship between two variables. Uh, the number of that direction and strengths always gonna be something between one, uh, between minus one and positive one. It never ever gonna be uh, exceeded from one. Be aware of that. Um, the sign positive or negative just showing direction. For example, if you would have minus 0 0.95, it doesn't mean like, um, and you would have like positive 25, it doesn't mean like minus 0 0.95, it's just less than positive 0.25. It just, in which it is stronger than that one. The direction is negative, okay? I will talk about this more. Positive correlation or the positive sign um, shows uh, one variable, it's just increasing. The other one also is just increasing as well. So they are just in the same direction. So that example, positive 0.25, it, it means like the number one variable going up, uh, number two is also going up too. Negative correlation, when one variable is just increasing, the other one is just decreasing, which is crazy, right? Um, and vice versa. For example, the minus point um, 95, I guess I said, it means like whenever variable number one is just increasing, variable number, number two is just decreasing, okay? Be aware, that's very important. Correlation doesn't mean equal, like doesn't mean like causation. So they are different. You cannot just um, conclude a cause and effect relationship based on a correlation. Um, scientists, psychologists, I don't know, other majors, they are doing that like all the time, biologists, everyone. For example, they're gonna have correlation results and they would say that, yeah, that variable is just causing this one. For example, I could give you an example, cancer and smoking. Smoking doesn't um, like, it's not like having cancer or getting cancer is as a result of a smoking, not at all. They do have relationship, positive relationship correlation, which means like whenever you're smoking more, you got to definitely, I mean, the possibility of having cancer going to be more for you. Maybe there are some variables here and there, for example, um, that would be cause of cancer, but we don't know yet, okay? For example, maybe because people, they are under stress, they are smoking more, and the stress is just cause of cancer. It's not a smoking. Smoking is just a byproduct of that. We don't know. All we know now is just a smoking 
uh, is uh, correlated positively with cancer. Okay, I hope it would make sense. And this picture is everything. You can see a scientist, you can see, okay, by his side is correlation, but he's just going after causation, which is not good. I do have a question here for you. Um, I wanna ask you which one of these <laughs> correlations are more strong. I will give you one minute. Or less. So you can see one positive uh, 0.17 and 0.82, which means both variable are just increasing together. You can also here see um, two negative, one minus 0.19 and another minus 0.47. So look at the biggest number here and the strongest one. It is 90.5. I know it is negative here, but um, it doesn't matter. We don't care about the sign at all in correlation. Whenever we are talking about the strong of uh, this, the strengths of the relationship between two variables. If you would ask me about the direction, yes, it means like uh, variable number one is increasing, variable number two is just decreasing. Okay, but here just asking you about the strengths of the relationship. So be mindful and always regardless of the sign, go for the bigger number. You got it. Another point, oops. Uh, here you can see two graphs. One of them is a positive correlation. You can see if you study more per week, per week for developmental psychology, your grade gonna be more as well, right? For example, let's consider this one. This is student. So he has studied, in the middle and his grade is also in the like less than middle i guess but this one she has studied a lot or he has studied a lot and um their grade also is just very good just high okay so they are increasing together hours if you study more you're gonna get a better grade this one look at this this is student they are just watching tv all the time <laughs> so yeah of course they would fail right you can see that the hours for uh, watching TV is just high. The grade is just low. Okay. How about this one? This is student. Uh, they didn't uh, watch TV that much. The hour is just so low. And here you can see the grade is just high. So they are just negatively correlated together. Okay. One variable increasing, second decreasing. And and gesture. I'm working in gesture, cognition, and communication labs, all about hand. Um, here you can see more correlation. Um, this is no relationship, zero, because I mean, you cannot find any pattern here, right? Like they are just so random, not good. Here you can see moderate positive relationship. Uh, for example, it's not like that much CP, it's not like that much like it's just 0 0.50, so it's just something in between. Moderate, uh, negative relationship. You can see, again, this is not really strong. It's just in between. But we have perfect one here, and I love being perfect. Everybody does, so. Perfect negative relationship. You can see, yeah, it's just so steep, and it's just perfect, it's just minus one. So the strength is just very, the strength actually is just perfect, it's just one. And the sign is negative. What about this one? The sign is positive and the strength is just one. Whenever one increasing, second increasing as well. Again, even in perfect condition, we don't conclude any sort of causation, okay? So why we can't, um, so why can't we draw any sort of causation in correlation between variables? First of all, there might be some third variable here and there. Like I said, for example, maybe a stress causing cancer and it's not a smoking. Maybe since people do are just, they do have a lot of stress in their life. Their life is just so crazy, so fast paced. Um, they're smoking more and um, it just happening to them. Maybe because they are like living in uh, big cities, 
and um, the weather is not good and like they're going to be some, I don't know, some crazy stuff in the environment that cause cancer for them. Maybe it's not smoking at all. So there are always going to be some other variables that we cannot catch them. Another one is direction. We don't know if variable number one is just causing variable number two, or maybe it's variable number two is just causing number one. Maybe because you have cancer, you're smoking more. I don't know. I know that's cancer <laughs> example going to be crazy. But yeah, maybe because like um, back to a study and grade, maybe because your grade is just so good, you are studying more because you are getting more motivated. Maybe this is just motivation that is just driving you to just have a better grade. I mean, we never know uh, what variable gonna cause what. So that's why it's, it's all about correlation, okay? So never ever conclude any causation in correlation research. Okay, quasi-experimental research. The only difference of quasi-experimental uh, research uh, from uh, experimental research is it's not random. You didn't random, randomize uh, your participants uh, because they do have some existing characteristics that it's not ethical or it's not feasible to just do so. For example, if you are studying on um, gender and cancer, you cannot, for example, if you want to just understand if women, uh, like what causes, for example, I don't know, um, cancer in women, you cannot just, uh, randomize people and just inject cancer to them and just make them sick. No, it's not ethical, right? Same goes for HIV. For example, if you are uh, considering the impact of culture or cultural behavior and HIV, you cannot separate uh, a specific country and inject HIV to people and um, like investigate what's going on with them. It's not ethical, it's not feasible. So, all you can do is you find some people and just conduct experiment on them. That's why just saying that it's not randomized and it's just based on existing characteristic, which can be, you can just work with people who already have cancers. You can work with people who already um, have HIV, okay? This is the only difference between Quasi-experimental research and experimental research. And quasi-experimental research is, is always just part of descriptive research. No experimental. So we are almost done with descriptive research. We talked about observation. We talked about interviews or surveys. They are same. We talked about case studies. We talked about correlational studies. And we talked about quasi-experimental studies.